Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I am determined I am really going to sort this clutch out once and for all. Okay, so a lot of you last week will have seen that I started my hydraulic uh, clutch conversion on this car, and I was stumped by my imperial tube nut that I need to fit into this master cylinder I've got because there just hasn't been any cars in Australia that I know of that have been made with uh, those fittings for at least 20 years or so now. Uh, so you just can't find them in wreckers anymore. They're just not something that's around. But I managed to get them so we can get that, that part sorted. The other part that there were lots of uh, comments about is this section here. So yes, this cable is quite thin and uh, it was more to prove the concept to start with to make sure that it worked. And then I'm, my plan was to change over to the bigger cable, which is the one that I got, the custom cable I got made. I just wanted to make sure it worked before I went cutting up a cable that I spent um, a, a bit of money on getting made up. But I've had a rethink again, and the fact is I don't like the angle in this. Even though it runs through this sleeve, it's going to eventually saw its way through this sleeve, and I'm, I just, I'm not a fan, and I thought about it backwards and forwards quite a bit, and I'm going back to my previous thought is I am going to actually use a bit of rods. I'm going to actually see if I can make this be the piece that will work on this car. So um, I will get stuck into that straight away now and, uh, and pull this apart and you can see what my idea is and I think it's better than this setup. Alright, so I've got my piece of uh, piece of rod and I've threaded both ends. I've done a lot more thread on this uh, on this end here. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but I've got I've threaded this end uh, all the way through here. This is going to be the end that goes uh, through the arm itself, and then just a small amount of thread at the top. The reason I didn't go and buy a, just a piece of all thread is because when it travels through this hole in the gearbox. I'm worried it's going to act like a saw and it's going to, uh, same as what the cable would do, and it's sort of cut through that. What I'm going to probably have to do is, uh, I'm going to have to bend this rod so that it sort of travels through. The, the pull will still be straight, but it just needs to pull so it will travel through that hole nicely. And uh, that looks like it should be pretty decent. I think it's going to do the job nicely. So let's uh, disassemble this cable now and... Uh, Put it all back together again with this piece of rod in there and fingers crossed this is going to be much stronger it's not going to snap it's not going to damage what's here i think this is the way to go so that is looking much better so i had to put a, uh, a kink in the bar but it should be a nice clean pull we have plenty of space in the uh, the hole, so there should be plenty of room for this uh, sort of movement around as the uh, arm swings through its arc. So I am quite happy with that. So now it's time to start looking at putting in a hard line from the cylinder back here up to the uh, master cylinder at the front. All right, so I've got my brake line here. I've just got a, uh, a coil of it. This uh, race works line straight and it makes things so much easier. So I've just run it through a few times. I've got a nice straight length of uh, brake line now. So I'm gonna run it through the tunnel of the car up to the front and then I can start putting the flare on the front of the car. I actually have that fitting that I couldn't find anywhere. Uh, that's what I need. So um, we can put the flare on and actually start mounting in the, uh, the line.
All right, so I've got my brake line through. I've cut it to size, so it's a nice length. I've got a bit of room here to sort of wrap it around and make it a nice transition. I've double checked that I've got the right fitting for the uh, the end of this. And I just wanted to, uh, to note that the inside of this is a different shape. It takes a different shape flare to what the master cylinder does at the front. So the master cylinder at the front needs more of the, uh, the bubble flare because it's got a tapered uh, seat. Whereas this one has um, the the inverted seat, so uh, I need to make uh, I need to make a flare that actually has a uh, instead of being a bubble, actually has a a cone in it. So there's a couple of different styles of flares. I've got a, a really good uh, brake flaring tool kit now that uh, that works quite well. I've used sort of other like sort of more basic ones in the past, and they're not that great. Uh, definitely worth getting a sort of a reasonably decent tool. This wasn't that expensive, but it was, but it's, uh, it's good stuff. I might put a link to something like this in the uh, description. Another good tip is if you are making brake lines, is don't flare the end without putting the fitting on the line first. Make sure the fitting is on the line before you make the flare, because I've done it a few times now, and you end up having to cut the end off and doing it all again, because yeah, once the flare's on there, you're not getting it off. All right, let's flare it. Can I get up? And here we are, I've got my hard line all in, all uh, bolted up. I have the entire hydraulic clutch on this end all done. So now all I need to do is to fill up the reservoir and bleed it, and then we should hopefully have a working clutch. Oh, that's so much better. I have a clutch that feels like a clutch should. <laughs> it's not too light, but it's not too heavy. It's just right. It's, it's sound. Oh, that's, that's so much better. So uh, my next task is I need to get in and uh, bleed the brakes again because uh, I've pulled the brake system apart, so I need to bleed them again. And then I can actually try and move it and see if that clutch is actually uh, moving the arm enough to engage and disengage the clutch and see if it's all going to work. Oh! All right, brakes are bled. I found that this... Um Super Cheap's vacuum bleeder works much better with some uh, thread tape. I pulled out all of the, the bleed nipples on all of the calipers and put some thread tape around there and then put them back in. It just stops the air sucking in past the threads while you're trying to vacuum bleed it. And that worked much better. You could actually use it properly and it seems to have worked quite well. I haven't actually tested the brakes yet, but they look like they bled pretty well. So. Now it's time to get back in the car. I'm going to have a little bit of a tweak and see if I can tweak the, uh, the cold start. I'm just continually working on the cold start on this to get it to run a little bit nicer. And then I might be able to see if that clutch works. <laughs> Still need to do a little bit more work, work on the cold start, but the engine's running again and it's running nicely. It started much better with a bit more crank enrichment. I was at 40%, I've gone up to 50%, but it's still struggling a bit to start, needs a bit of throttle, so um, I might raise that to 60% next time, see how that goes. But we are looking good. So I am actually going, and the clutch, the clutch seems to work. So I'm actually going to um, maybe take it for a, um, a sneaky little test drive in Mexico.
see how this first little little run goes. the brakes again pump them up and they got a bit but uh, yeah there's still some air pockets in there oh it's actually drivable it's actually something it needs some work but it's drivable that's my first time really driving it and it actually there's some teething issues that are gonna have to be sorted out but oh it's a good day it's a good day it drives it drives it's um yeah it once it's actually warm it's it, much nicer there's a few bits and pieces i'm gonna have to play around with the starter motor i've got an issue with a loose connection going to it a loose um, like starting uh, signal and that stops every now and then I have to just touch the wire move it and it works again so uh, it's not the solenoid it's just the it's just the wire going into it this it's loose in there somehow I'll have to uh, have a look at that there is uh, there's a bunch of stuff to put together on the inside so the steering wheel is not bolted on uh, I have no horn I have no wipers um, I need a, there's a bunch of bits and pieces that I need to sort out but oh we're getting close we're so close to, act like now it's just the little things to actually get it drive, seat belts. I am gonna put the other seats back in it again. I've just got the factory seat in there because it's just easier for other people to get in and out when the, the dyno and the engineer and the other people to be able to get into it. But my seats are my seats, which I'm going to put back in there, uh, but they're not necessarily gonna fit everyone. I've got to raise up this corner. There's a bunch of little things to do, but we are so close, yeah. Oh, that's such a good thing. I am also, um, I've been going backwards and forwards on fitting the map sensor to this car. Um, I was contacted by Link after I was uh, tuning on the dyno and I mentioned that I, I wanted to fit a map sensor uh, for barometric readings and they were saying that apparently the, that ECU has an inbuilt barometric sensor you it automatically adjusts for barometric pressure you don't have to rely on a map or anything like that it will do that but i think i am now going to go back i was backwards and forwards on this i am going to go forward and put on this uh, put on a map sensor onto this just so it gets um it, it's more for load sensing so on individual throttle bodies map sensors take a vacuum signal from each throttle body normally on a car with a plenum you've got a nice big vacuum signal because you've got a nice big plenum with a single throttle body and you get a nice a, a nice accurate reading on individual throttle bodies because the throttle bodies are so close to the inlet and they're small they're, they're all small it, you don't get a very reliable vacuum reading from them uh, particularly anything above about 50 percent throttle opening uh, you, you, you're not going to get any. You're not going to get any real difference. But what they help with is more things like load. So at a constant throttle setting, uh, if we're sort of going along on a, on a straight at a constant speed, a constant throttle, and then you start going up a hill, and the engine's under more load, it's going to need. It's going to be sucking more air, and that's where the map sensor can come. Uh, can, can sort of help fix on on load settings and stuff like that. So I think I will be set, fitting that. Bunch of little bits and pieces, but um, oh, we're going to be driving it soon. It actually drives now. Yes. Anyway, that is it for this one. If you enjoy these videos, please um, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Um, join us on Patreon to watch these videos a day before everybody else. And check out Push Parts by Jeff. As I mentioned last week, we have launched the Push Parts by Jeff app. Uh, it's available on uh, the Android 
app store, that's all right and ready to go. But uh, the iOS web store is um, being very difficult and they rejected the app because it was too simple um, for everybody to use. So basically, I'll add a link in the description Go and click on that link. If you want to try it, you can actually try out the uh, the app through a, a testing version. You can try out the app. Um, it works just like normal. Once you go through and get uh, signed up for it, you can use it like normal. It's just the hoops that we had to jump through for Apple, and hopefully we can get enough people onto that to tell Apple, come on, people want this. Let's uh, put it in the... Uh, regular app store for everybody to, to, uh, to use. It's completely free and compare your prices for your Porsche parts there uh, for any make, model, any year, whatever you've got. All right, guys, that's it for this one. See you next time.